Hey class, how's it going? So um, I'm Royce and I'm gonna be answering the marketing movie night questions. And um, starting with the Joneses, um, number one, who were the main players? And that was Steve, Kate, Mick, and Jen. And each of their positions. So Steve was the father, Kate was the mother, Mick was the son, and then Jen was their daughter. And I say in with air quotes because they weren't a real family. Um, number three, what are the benefits of lifestyle marketing and what are the cons? So I think a benefit of lifestyle marketing is that these marketeers can be the idol or the envy of all of those around them. And they can also create this image that the consumer wants to see and or be themselves. Um, a con of lifestyle marketing is that in many cases, this lifestyle being marketed is completely artificial. And in this movie, regardless of how perfect the Joneses seem to be, they're all just plain characters. And okay, so number four, how does lifestyle marketing compare to traditional marketing? Okay, so lifestyle marketing isn't so much about pushing a product or service itself but instead it's more about having the customer believe that these brands or products or services are a way of life um, for example traditional marketing would be showing off a catalog and then talking about the product and pushing the product solely by itself but lifestyle marketing will show someone using that product, them being happy with that product, them driving the, a really fast car, wearing really nice clothes, and then the consumer sees this perfect state of living and they want to, they want to recreate that in their own life. So they go out and they buy the things and the services that they're seeing in this lifestyle form of marketing. And um, so, for example, uh, the neighbor's wife would show the products on a catalog on screen, but the Joneses were showing it in their everyday life where they were wearing the clothes, they were doing the golf, they were having the video games and all of the frozen foods. Um, they weren't saying, hey, look at this product buy this product they were saying hey look how happy i am with these products and all of those around them started to follow in their footsteps uh, all right so number five is lifestyle marketing in this model ethical and why um i don't believe that this form in the movie of lifestyle marketing was completely ethical just because in the movie there is um, a lot of people's lives who were negatively affected by the Joneses lifestyle. Um, for example, there's a girl who gets into a car accident from an alcoholic beverage that the parents were supposed to be advertising to their friends. But it got into the wrong hands. The girl got drunk. She got into a car accident. It wasn't good for her. Um, their neighbor he listened to Steve, or the dad, he listened to him about how he would buy a steady stream of gifts for his wife to keep things spicy or romantic. And the neighbors started to spend himself into debt and eventually he killed himself because he couldn't uh, maintain that financial lifestyle. And these might not have been the goals of the Joneses, but they're definitely still detrimental to those around them. All right, explain how this type of marketing shows up in today's current marketing techniques. Um, I think this type of marketing shows itself in a lot of different industries. Um, a very specific example would be Nike. Uh, they sell athletic performance gear, but they really push their brand um, as, you know, it revolves around how there's an athlete inside all of the consumers. You know, they see a sweaty LeBron James playing an amazing game and he's wearing Nike. So it makes you wanna wear the same shorts, the same shoes, and you wanna go out there and live that same lifestyle. Okay, 
I'm gonna move on to the social dilemma. So number one, were there particular moments in the film that resonated with my experience? So yeah, um, using social media, there was a specific part that talked about how social media and our phones are designed like slot machines almost. Um, how we're never positive on the outcome that we're gonna get, but regardless, we'll still continue to pick up that phone every time they go off. Um, number two, the film highlights how social media distorts our view of ourselves, our relationships, our broader reality. Have you experienced this distortion? If so, how? Okay, so um, the film talks about how us as humans are becoming perfectionists for social media. I found myself negatively judging myself before posting on social media. Um, for example, I skateboard almost every day, but it's very seldom that I find myself posting my skateboarding because I'm very critical of myself. So there's a good example of that in the film. Number three, uh, about human willpower expected to compete with the sophisticated AI. So I believe that us as humans won't be able to compete against thousands of these tech developers and algorithms and AI that are designed to put things in front of us that we're gonna wanna click and continue to scroll. So it's gonna be really, really hard to to fight that that urge to keep scrolling. And I think um, if we limited ourselves from this social media and technology, we'd have a healthier relationship with it. Um, number four, policies. Okay, so in order to help protect consumers against negative side effects of social media, I think if certain policies that prevented excess screen time were put in place, it would definitely help us as technology users. And then lastly, current policy involving social media that I believe is beneficial is the age restriction lots of social medias have. Um, and by only allowing members of a certain age to join that social media, I think that it would protect our younger generations from the very potentially toxic electronic bubble that the social media and technology creates. And I went a little over time. I'm sorry I talked as fast as I could. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you.